Hi everyone and Hi. thanks for tuning in. Uh so to take a cue from David Letterman, our next guest really doesn't need no introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway because I enjoy doing it. I enjoy and I enjoy the introduction bit of interviews. I get to be very flamboyant. <laughs> We're here with Durjoy Datta, one of India's top authors. You will know him best for his romance novels, but he is far from a one-trick pony. From sci-fi to the screen, he has done it all. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I I, I like the bookshelf behind you. It's uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, like it. I always wanted one uh, as a as a kid, and it makes me very jealous now. Envy is not a good position to start this interview on. I mean, it's it's okay. It's a human emotion. <laughs> you can't you can't run away from it. It's just to accept it and then move out. And now I and have as, it. Now I can do everything. Now I have it. Yes. Now I have a book. The benefit of being an adult, you get to fulfill all your childhood dreams, if they are indeed the same dreams. Yeah, but but now now that now that I'm a I mean, Arun, I also realized that keeping a bookshelf is hard work because it's it's one place that requires the most dusting because you're never oh, yes. pulling out old books. They are, they are a hassle, and then you feel sad that oh, now this book is old and unkempt. So yeah. <laughs> While we're on the subject of reading, I have one question because English teachers always say the same thing. I should know. My mother is an English teacher. and they always say they always say the best writers are readers first do you think this is true yeah i mean um, i think uh, i mean this is what i've always believed in that if like you have to be very arrogant if you want to be a writer so i i think the journey starts from you reading a lot of books and when you read a lot of books you eventually sort of realize that okay i think i can write better than them and from that place of arrogance comes your book which you think is better than a few best sellers that have already already been floating around in the market for a few years so unless you know what people are writing you can't write i mean it's a, it's a very um, romantic notion to say that the story found me i have a story that everyone was should listen to they should drop their work and you know they should read this book but no one's going to do that so it has to like Being a writer comes from self belief, and self belief only comes from a place where you think that you are better than others. Until the time you read a lot of books, you sample a lot of books, you are not going to get there. If you are only going to read the best books, you will not be a writer because you are reading the best of everyone, and you are thinking, "Oh, I can't even construct a text, let alone you know a paragraph, and then eventually a book." So you have to read a lot of books to sort of find the weak links and say that, "Okay." this if this is the publishing standard i can do better like for many years i was a publishing standard like if durjoy can get a book published then we can also do it i don't think i've ever heard anything so true and so frank said about the impulse to write but if we're going on the other side of the spectrum how do you avoid getting complacent as a writer because you get you tend to get in that comfortable stage right once you started getting praise and what not if you're still a student if you start getting marks in your igcse english paper you get you'll eventually get lazy you'll stay at that standard as a best selling author if you're getting praise you might remain stagnant how do you ensure that you grow as a author um uh, i think see see i'll tell you um So a lot of people have asked this question that uh, when do you feel most satisfied when you're writing? And let me tell you, I mean, I'm I'm not saying it just for the sake of it, but there are there are there there is a so in every creative work there there is a thing called as flow. You know, when you're really you're like in the zone, right? Whatever you are doing, you you just lose track of time. So of course that is that is something that you really enjoy. The other part is when you have finished writing a book. because when you finish writing a book the high that you have that you get that okay i've i set out to tell a story and i have told a story i have put an end to it and this is going to be there for all of my lifetime and beyond etc etc so i think that is where i get my most kick from now what happens is so if so i've been writing romantic fiction for a really long time and then i made the shift into other things but i just did not tell people that i have shifted my my title still remained the same because we have to sell books but as a writer i feel very bold 
if i keep doing the same things over and over again so no one sort of sets out writing saying that i am going to go out and sell 100000 copies everyone starts writing because they really get a kick out of it and if you start losing that kick you'll find other ways to find that kick so when when so now my kick is uh how can i still sell this as a love story when it's not mm. so i i know that you know uh, i can hook people into that you know sappy soppy stuff or i do not have to believe in it but i know that okay these couple of pages will work so i'll put them in mm-hmm. that is also a sort of gratification for the reader like you know when a when you watch a movie the last scene where the hero is just shooting the villain and you, you know you are in a slow motion you know that's going to happen it's just a gratification that you are giving the viewer the viewer has already has you know they have derived the fun from the movie so it's it's a bit like that i will tell a different story but the romance will still be there because firstly you have to keep a title which is as cliched as the boy who loved and sell the book and then i get the freedom to write whatever i want to true we've spoken so, yeah. about I mean, that the risk of being complacent yeah yeah we've spoken about that a lot in your interviews how you just write whatever you want then you add the romance like a garnish like namak to a omelet yeah i mean see that's 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 uh, i there are only two things that you can do with two characters who are in a story you either either make them friends or you make them fall in love you like you can't really uh, i mean see if 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 a story is centered around two characters they have to care for each other and how do you care for each other you either make them very very good friends or you make them fall in love making them fall in love is the easier way to go you get a lot of you know meat from it you also get a lot of i mean there's a very fine line between friendship and love anyway like if if it's a true friendship so uh so yeah i mean i i find it an easy way out i mean it's it's a cop out i can i can not make them fall in love as well but then why not do it i mean everyone like um i have no problems except accepting that i want to sell more books i want my core story to go out to more readers because that is where i get my high from that oh so many people read my book you know they enjoyed it and they now you know come and tell me and there's a feedback loop that oh you wrote well and you know when are you going to come out with the next book so i enjoy that so i give those little gratification along the way and in any in any case any creative work is emotional manipulation i mean when you tell a story even even when you are in a party and you are telling a story to someone you do not want that person to not react you want them to laugh you want them to you know say oh that's really bad you want them to sympathize empathize with you and when you don't see that happening you also exaggerate the story you put in more details you make it more interesting you know so it's 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 just that heard it said somewhere i can't remember where that the best writers are the best actors I think that rings true uh i mean i mean i mean not best actors but see a lot of writers that i have met are are like raging introverts so there are there are there are two things that are happening one is that's happening in real life and one thing that's that's playing in their head so in their head probably they are the best actors like they are controlling the situation they know how each character is acting and reacting so uh maybe not the best actors but they can go back home and be the best director of whatever happened and make their own version of it so not maybe i mean some people might be but not everyone hmm i think that's a more accurate saying but that impulse to write I feel some people some people accuse writers of wanting to play god. I don't think that's entirely true, maybe a little bit true. But where do you think that first impulse to write comes from? At least where did it come from for you? Uh, uh it it came uh I I I started writing when I I started writing my first book when I was uh in my I think third year of college or second year of college somewhere around that. and before that i used to be a blogger so i used to write a blog and back in 2004 2005 blogging was a very tight knit small community so we used to write and only other bloggers used to read us 
and everyone used to pat each other's back and say that oh you are a great writer oh you are a great writer and like it was a very very small community and because i was the youngest of the lot uh that they used to tell me that you know you write so i used to write about whatever happened in the day and i used to tell it in a more interesting fashion so so maybe in the blog i had a girlfriend in real life i didn't so just like little details so when they, when they sort of saw that you know oh this this guy has like a way to you know tell that this happened during the day they started telling me you should write a book and we should we used to tell each other that you know as often comment that ah you write well but uh, i was young so i took it seriously i said yeah i think i think i am better than all these guys <laughs> and so that is where i think the first uh spark came and then what happened was that a friend of mine had started writing a book and i was 100% sure that i am better than him so my entire thing was i will finish this book before he does and at that point in time i did not think that you know uh, it will get published because writers like us which is like c- commercial fiction writers with hmm. with no background in literature because uh, i think back in the day um I mean, engineers and you know MBA grads. These 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 are not the profiles of people who are getting published. You had to have a serious background in literature or something around that. You know, some esoteric degree you had to have to write a book, and then your book had to be about certain uh, not very everyday subjects. Like you will you will find very few books that have you know gained prominence that are set in a middle class. urban household you know i mean even even people who have never been out of delhi would write about the naxalite movement so that was the kind of books that that you know made the cut so uh, i think i think that's that's where it started from that you know i i need to write better than this guy who's writing and there are a bunch of bloggers who say that i am a better writer than them so i think that's where it started i I think what you said about having a community as a writer especially as any kind of creative person really even if it's just our people tell you you're better than us and that gives you that kick of confidence I think having a community is super important Yeah but you have also have to build that community because if I were to um, I mean because these communities can also be very toxic because you know um, mm-hmm. create in any creative field is so subjective that and a lot of it is like centered around how big of a snob you are you know the most arrogant s- snob person will probably have the most influence in the group and probably not the most talented one the best thing about this blogger community was that we were all upstarts and we were all doing it because we really liked doing it because not because it was our profession now if i were to say like your say your mother students who are all literature students and who take that stuff very seriously if they were to critique each other i mean i i just feel that there would be a little bit of a hostility there hmm. in us we were just we were all struggling and we were all trying to like we were literally when we used to put up a post it's like we were watching over their heads and saying kaisa laga kaisa laga so we were we were very childish in our enthusiasm in that sense oh. so we were not like oh we are writers and we have this community so let's you know try to learn something you we just trying stuff out so yeah it reminds me of me and my friends cuz if i had a rupee for every one of my friends that said guys i want to start a blog i would have at least 5 rupees that's not a lot of money <laughs> but in this economy well, anything will do <laughs> yeah yeah true 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 <laughs> do you think blogging is a good place to start for a young writer just getting out there uh i mean maybe i i i i have tuned out of the community now so i'm i'm not sure how many blogs people read nowadays they do read instagram poets or people who write on instagram you know along with the picture so i think that's probably a better route to do it i think uh, mm. the end result is probably the same uh and i and I, I, i don't think that it's it's primarily helpful to uh find encouragement i think what it does is that if you lock yourself in a discipline 
that you have to put up something every day then then what happens is it goes into your system that oh i have to write and then the the biggest thing that pulls down any writer is self doubt when you have a deadline that at 8 o'clock every day you have to publish something which means that you have to publish something which means you have no inhibitions about doing it that i can doubt as much as i want till 7 o'clock in the evening but 8 o'clock i have to put out something so so yeah i think uh, people should should i mean people sh- this is what i've always said that if you want to write so much you will write you know you cannot wait for you to be perfect like i i remember when when i started out uh, so my books were like if you would have read them they are quite average so i used to look at writers who were much older than me um in their mid 30s and i used to read their books and i was like wow they are like really good with the language and i was like oh yes i have time i have like 10 years then i have like 8 years and 6 years and 4 years i will get there and now i'm their age and i'm still not there but had i just stopped that okay let me just try to perfect my writing till the time it gets good i would have never written whatever 10 12 books that i have written so i think just to lock yourself in a routine of of writing and then putting yourself out there and then you know allowing people to humiliate you for your writing is a great thing if you want more engagement on your writing just sneak in a few typos so that then you know that people are reading your stuff ah that is a smart move that i would not have thought of i'm like religious with my use of grammarly and now i know that i can use it to make sure people are paying attention so i, I, have, I have i have i have recently started using uh, grammarly and i would not suggest it for uh, for writing books i would really suggest it for writing mails and probably assignments because uh, what often happens is that it kills your own voice like i i i really want to say this book is pretty good when i could just say this book is good but i want to like if i am a character in a book i want to say this book is pretty good so i think grammarly like if you are if you if you have if you are a young writer i would say do not use grammarly because not only will it kill your narration sentences but it will also kill your dialogue because dialogues have no rules you can write anything you can't have grammarly dictate what what a dialogue is I think that's a very fair point. But there, therein lies one of the biggest complications, I think, of trying to be a writer when you're really young, like a teenager, like me, or a child just starting out, and you're trying to figure out what good writing is—that golden standard that you want to reach, that you want to emulate. But then you have teachers saying one thing about what good writing is. You have your parents saying one thing. Social media is saying another thing. Literary critics are saying another thing. Everyone is saying something different. So how do you decide for yourself what your golden standard is? I think only take advice from people who have finished writing a book. Because finishing a book is the hardest thing. What's inside the book is okay. I mean, you might have a great story today, but do you have it in yourself to finish a book? Because you might not have a great story tomorrow. Tomorrow you might have to fake a good story, but you need to learn the craft, and you need to have the discipline to finish a book. I think when when uh, I, I, and I have like I suffer from the most cruelest form of imposter syndrome ever. but i keep reading these audio books which you know i'm i'm one of those characters from english movies who wake up with an audio book in their head saying that you are good enough today will be a good day so i have realized that that i can do something that what a lot of other people can't a lot of people come and they tell me that you know i have a great idea i want to write a book they have the same sentence the next year and the next year and by the time i have already written three books my ideas might not be as great as yours right in in all probability your idea will be better than mine but i can write it down so there is nothing good or bad first comes have you finished writing a book so unless i mean you can prepare as much as you want to but till the time you actually sit down finish writing a chapter then finish writing the second one can you like say that okay this is go eventually going to turn into something and you know all these advice are i mean it's 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 just in the air like what is good i mean uh, i i even even when you say 
you know literary critics and um, commercial fiction and you know the the mm. what is literary what is not literary uh, the only definition i think that holds is that it, are people still going to read it 40 years down the line or 50 years down the line i am 100% sure that most of my books will be relegated and you know they to the sidelines no one's going to read it so for for that reason i am sure that i am a um, commercial fiction writer that okay they they might not be relevant 20 years down the line but uh, 20 years down the line might be still relevant but not past it but for example chetan bhagat's first book and i know chetan bhagat is you know it's he's an easy catch you know you can he's a pinata hanging you can go after him with a stick oh, and yeah. every everyone will laugh and you know he's a, he's an he's an easy, easy catch but when he wrote 5 point someone um in 2003 i think and i was in 2004 and i was i was like a voracious reader i i remember just a year ago uh, my parents had made me read uh, or a couple of years ago uh, god of small things because it won the booker and you know mm-hmm. arun dhati roy you know she has a bengali son named go read it so i read it and so um and you know it was it was it it was a great book although i remember nothing out of it i read it a couple of years ago again and, Me and, and i realized yeah it's a, yeah so but i i remember five point someone when i read it and i was just discussing it with some other writer friend that we remember entire sequences from that book because most of that book rang so true with our lives like i i i i probably do not care about um, who are, who were the characters see some the christian twin. syrian syrian christian amma and chako and all these characters they yeah, ran a so, banana plantation or something yeah uh, and one of them drowned and you know then there was a funeral so they, these are the things that i remember but only because i read it a couple of years ago but 5.7 came at a time where we were looking for representation like average engineering college kids where they i want a story with an indian name so that i could connect it to myself with a family that is that probably has a scooter and has a zen you know i want me in the stories where is where is me so i we read the, that book and we were we were all enthralled because this 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 was us in the pages of a book never before that had that happened so uh, that book i mean it you you might call it out for whatever reasons that book was entertaining it was on the money and people will still be reading it so that i think is not commercial fiction that i think is literary fiction maybe not 150 years from now but it's it's still going to hit uh, a lot of people in the next 15 20 years as well I still think the point about your books not being remembered down the line is highly debatable. But I, I mean there are there are there are a couple of books which 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 I think are you know okay it's it's very hard for me to uh, sort of see my books in in a very high light because I'm so used to disparaging my books but a couple of books I think they might who knows fingers crossed I think we just have to wait yeah. and see Yeah Let's wait. Uh, I I think my I I I'll let my daughter decide. So when she'll be tw- in her 20s if she's still reading it. Accomplishment. Yeah. But that thing about always being the biggest critic of your own work, it turns into paralysis sometimes for writers. So it's natural to be a bit embarrassed of your own work, but how do you prevent that feeling from holding you back and stopping you from getting your work out there? How do you work up that courage? uh it's it's is basically uh i think we so we make writing into a very romantic notion of you know it's mm. it's like this big thing that we are doing people are going to read it their lives are going to change it's no different from a powerpoint presentation you can keep changing the font it's not going to matter in the long run people are going to read it forget it move on right so you have to it's what you are saying is that oh i am not what the other part of self doubt is that you believe that you are a much bigger writer than this but i am not able to get ahead of this because i i can write much better but can you really write much better i think you have done a pretty good job here so 
the only thing that works for me is that I write it uh, and I have a target that I have to get past it by this time or I have to write a thousand words. So sometimes that happens or sometimes what happens is that I just strike through the entire text and I change the story. When I change the story, I realize or I change the voice. I realize that, okay, this is really bad. Let me just go back and see what I had written. And then that seems great. And then, you know, suddenly you see things opening up. So there is, there is no way out of it, but there are certain tricks that you can do. One is of course you, you, you make it time bound. The other is that you see how bad can you get and then you become a better writer. That element of time and the deadline forcing you to write hits a little close to home for me because I have this blog and I put myself under pressure. Do you remember the, the beautiful days when we thought lockdown would only last for 21 days in India? Yeah. So I said, okay, I will write about the pandemic each of these 21 days and it has to go up in my blog before I go to sleep. So I would hmm. stay up to three, four, I would fall asleep on my keyboard in online school, but I would make myself write and it I got I got one out there every day. And now hmm. I'm trying to write a book. And that has been going on for four months with no progress. <laughs> so I think that element is I, I think all all writers uh, need to uh, it's you might think it's not relevant, but all writers need to listen to some productivity books be it by David Allen or James Clear or etc because these are these are at the end this is the project management books and what you're writing is a project the only the and the downside is that there's no boss I mean there is a hazy deadline in the future which you have yourself said but your project is always going to be in shambles so how do you take care of it and unless you put yourself in a regimented work schedule of writing and you know not just staring at the laptop and then saying oh i'm not getting an idea let me just switch to netflix maybe you know watching something will open your mind no you'll only feel bad that other people are writing so well that is getting made into netflix shows and you are just you can't even write your second chapter so uh, i think that uh, and you know th th this is another question that a lot of people ask me that um, why are so many engineers and MBA grads turning into writers? And it's not about the quality of their work, but, but that they have finished writing their book. Why do they, like, how have they finished it? Because they treat it like that, that this is an assignment. This is going to be marked. This is going to be compared to other kids and I got to finish it. There's only a limited time that I have, which is something that at least when, when the batch of us were growing up, um, it was it was hard drilled into us that you know you if you have taken this up you got to finish it. So I think that's a lot of reasons why um, a lot of engineering graduates end up writing books and finishing them because they know that okay you have started it you cannot do this oh I'm not getting inspired nonsense for too long you got to write the next chapter. So yeah and you also have to see. And this is what I've said, that you also have to come from a place of arrogance. So I remember when, uh, so I did before my engineering, I uh, joined a coaching institute, which was one of Delhi's best coaching institutes. And we used to go to our teachers with doubts that, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not able to solve this question. Can you solve it for me? And they used to say that you are sitting in the best institute in Delhi and you are not being able to solve it. So no one else will. So forget it try other questions so you have to apply that to a little bit of your writing you are probably with the kind of bookshelf that you have behind you you're probably one of the better readers in your class so you have to tell yourself bad chapter but would, would my would my readers really know they think it's fine yeah maybe they, they might even think it's brilliant because what do they know it's probably only the sixth book that they're reading in their lives i think that whole thing about identifying it as an assignment and then making yourself finish it is super useful for teenage and kid writers because we all want to write books. I, I have so many friends who are so passionate about writing who want to get that book down, who want to get that story out but then you have a science assignment then you have a physics project and then you have an English assignment and then you have a bio test. So I think but, keeping your but, eye on the prize. See, 
yeah that that's 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 what i have also realized so um, when i when i make a to do list and it happens like every other day so i i i write down all the things that i have to do in the day and at the end of the day i realize that i have done the most mundane of things which have taken me say washing clothes and putting them out and you know drying them folding it probably took me 2 hours to do it i could still manage that but i couldn't write 500 words so i could attempt all my other assignments are getting completed whereas my writing assignment isn't even getting started like i haven't even opened the laptop and you know uh, given it an honest shot i'm opening my laptop one tab is netflix other is my phone and i'm all i'm trying to make myself believe oh, all of this is important for me to write well it's not i think that's very true i will try and apply this if you see my name on a crossword shelf at some point you will know that it has worked i'll be i'll be very jealous also i'll be i'll be fearful i am very competitive <laughs> oh my <laughs> we can be friendly rivals yeah yeah so uh, uh, i mean uh, if you i think the indian commercial writing scene we are all uh, we are all, i think it's it's the most accepting scene of all we are all jealous of each other and we just tell it to other people that we are jealous of you but we also work together as a cabal so that we sort of know how much the other guy is charging so that we could charge a similar amount and we can <laughs> together we can jack up our prices even with falling sales so yeah it's a, it's a great group to be in it's like a unintentional union yeah it's an unintentional i mean it's it's a it's a union fueled by rivalry borderline hate uh need but with a bigger enemy that no one's reading reading us hmm. but none of us reads each other's books because then we'll have to give honest opinions Ah, the killer of friendships. Yeah, I mean, I, and, and genuinely, no, no writer genuinely wants feedback. They want praises. They want Absolutely. it's a great book. Da 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 da. Maybe you can change the character name. That is something that we'll accept. I agree. So to finish off this lovely interview, I have to ask you: Is there one bit of advice you want to give out to any writer who's just starting out? I think uh, read a lot. That's like the most obvious thing. Second, don't write with the aim of getting published. The thing is that if the first book you have, maybe you have written your first book, if someone is not publishing it, they gain nothing out of it. They gain nothing out of holding you back. At the end of the day, it's a business. So an editor's job is to look out for best stories, which is not to say that your story is not good, but it did not make the cut. and you know even editors sometimes miss out on a great book but what do you lose you lose out on probably 6 8 months of your life if you like writing so much write your next book if you're that brilliant no one's going to make the same mistake twice or thrice how like how passionately do you see yourself writing is it like it's i'm going to do it for 2 years i you're going to do like most writers think that i will always write you know no matter what happens i'm always going to be in this writing thing be it like a hobby or a profession so maybe you'll get published in your third book or your fourth book so don't think that okay i'm going to publish it it's going to be a huge hit you can be optimistic but that shouldn't be your aim when you're starting out and also learn to learn to uh, see the craft behind it i mean it's very easy to fall into uh, the trap of a a great story and often for young writers a great story is their own story they think that what's happening to them it is unique it has not happened to anyone else the i mean spoiler alert happened to everyone else everyone is thinking the same so do not f- fall uh, into a trap of a, of thinking that your story is a great story second do not fall into the trap of language do not try out linguistic gymnastics i mean a very good example is um uh meghna majumdar's the burning i think it just won some oh, prize yeah. jcb i mean i have going about suggesting that book to everyone not not for any other reason not for that oh this book is brilliant you should read it you know it's 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 top 100 books whatever that you can write so simply get it published in hardback and even win an award for it 
that is the level of language and and you know as a, as a writer just make your job easier why do you want to use long sentences i mean i and this has happened with me also when i when i'm writing my first draft i write very long sentences and i'm say finally durjadatta will will emerge out of the clutches of mediocre writing and now he'll be seen like a serious writer and then when i'm write, reading it on my second or my third draft i'm I, i'm like this is so stupid who who am i trying to impress even my readers will sort of lose track of what the story is and they will just be looking at these jumbled sentences that aren't even good so uh, do not fall into that trap oh i have to look out of the i have to on a tab i have to open thesaurus and then see an alternate word that will sound more nice just write your story and write it in an entertaining way and in accordance to the other books that you might have read and you know things and tricks that might have worked for that book copy thank you so much honestly the advice you've given was so on point not just for me and i think but i think for anyone watching this any aspiring author because i think you do you understand now after almost 10 what 10 13 years in the field you've yeah. clearly understood the ins and outs of writing so well and i i hope i can be like that one day of course you will with the kind of bookshelves that you have behind you you'll be a few years down the line you'll be ah, i can write better than all of these guys hatao i i want to have the the dia series book here one day my my own books will be on these bookshelves yeah in multiple translations in multiple languages. in multiple translations of course and hardback and both three editions <laughs> three editions <laughs> and i am looking forward to see your books last through posterity because i have a feeling i have a feeling thank you thank you at least at least one of them at least one of them that that's my aim at least write one good book that stands the test of time i guess we got to wait and watch yeah i have full faith <laughs> thank you thank you so much it was very nice talking to you you too <sighs> bye thank you bye bye thank you